with you. You better hope we don't have to talk again. I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here, or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? Can you delay the ritual? You saw what they were willing to do to a child just for trying. It's Corga's influence. Without her twisting things, I believe the druids might see sense. Then why don't you get rid of her? A low thought. But I'd be lying if I said I hadn't considered it. But the druids would slaughter us. We'd have to get close to Corga, within striking distance. I can't manage that. But they've already let you pass once. I'm not some murderer for hire. It doesn't sit well with me, either. But to get these people to safety, there's nothing I won't do. You'd be well rewarded for the risk. But if that won't sway you, there's nothing more to discuss. You! Saw you fighting those slimy bastards! Fancy a bowl? Best to fill your belly now. Well, we still can. Sure, thanks. Look, it ain't much, but it might make all the difference. The only way we'll make it to Baldur's Gate is to run, and run hard. If a knoll catches your scent, you'll need every bit of strength. Trust me. Delicious grill. Ah, uh, if it isn't the talk of the camp. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh! There isn't a bit of colour in those cheeks, Petal. Are you harsh, cold, feverish? Auntie Ethel will sort you out. I've lotions and potions galore. There's no need. I'm fine, really. Sorry, love. I just lose the run of myself sometimes. I must say, though, you're looking mighty peaky. Are you all right? I've been better. It's difficult to explain. Oh, I've seen it all. I once had a fella who'd been caught dabbling with a dryad. The wife was none too pleased and introduced him to a pot of boiling oil. But worry not. I fixed him up, and depending on the lighting, he looks good as new. My point is, whatever ails you, I promise I've seen worse. I hardly think that a mad old woman's lotions and potions are going to cure us. We should keep moving. What is it, Petal? What's wrong? I've got a Mind Flayer parasite in my head. As you recount your adventure, Auntie Ethel nods along, her eyes wide. You poor pet! My heart goes out to you, truly! I see no sign of a tentacle yet, but that could change in an instant. You need help. Serious help. I've ne'er a potion or lotion here that could do it, but yes, I may have something at home. I doubt a simple potion will suffice. This problem calls for strong magic. Petal, the things I've collected would blow your pretty little mind. Bracelets that hold the power of ten men, mirrors that capture the soul. I'll be heading home soon. Here. Let me mark it on your map, just in case. Hey, bother. Be careful on the road. I'd hate if something happened to you. Take care, Pet. Thought I sensed an inferno around here. But you aren't from Elturel. What's your story? I spent a good bit of time in the hells. Enlisted against my will by the Archdevil Zariel. Same as you, I suppose, if you're from Elturel. The devils were delighted when your city was swallowed up. I thought they had you for keeps. Glad you got out. You got lucky. It looks like you did too. And... 
You brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zario. Keeps me burning hot. Very hot by the smell of it. Might be burning out a piston ring or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Be my guest. But don't get too close or your eyes will melt shut. Phew! You really are burning up. Whoever put that engine together tried to house metallurgized demono valves inside a Ragnax alloy casement. Very risky. I might be able to help. But I'd need infernal iron. And a prayer that my hammer will survive the work. That thing isn't meant to operate outside of Ernest. I'm not sure how much longer it'll keep running the way it's going. Will you be able to turn down the temperature a little? Worried I'm gonna go in for a handshake and singe someone's arm off one of these days. I'd worry about surviving the night first. But help one, help both. If we can cool you off, it'll stabilize your engine and allow you to touch whomever you please. Where should we look for Infernal Iron? I've sensed some during our travels. It has a, a pull to it. Absolutely magnetic, once you know what you're looking for. I can show you where I'd look. We'll keep our eyes open for some iron. Meanwhile, I've still got plenty of weapons and armor in stock if you're looking to load up. Seems like a good moment to talk. Oh, my savior. I wish you could have visited in better times. The towers seized the battle done. The moonrise broke the darkest one. History or myth, whatever is depicted here is long past. What? It sounds like all we need to do to fix your engine is find some infernal iron. Let's hope Damon is as good as he seems. Once my engine's handled, I can focus on more important matters. Tadpoles, cults, frosty pints. Hot foot, hot foot, place is trapped. With haste. And away I go. There's only one place I'm finding a Sousa tree, the Underdark. Is that mister I see in the palm of your hands? An ambitious spell indeed. Oh. My, you startled me. I, uh, it's miles away. Care to tell me why you were conjuring an image of the goddess? No special reason, really. I was just practicing an incantation. There's more to it than that. You are contemplating her in a way I can hardly fathom. What can I say? She's... 
She's Mistra. I can't quite describe it. The need I sometimes feel to see her. To draw the filaments of fantasy into existence. No sculpture or painting could ever do her justice. Only the fabric that she herself is and embodies. The weave. Mistra is all magic. And as far as I'm concerned, she is all creation. I quite agree. There's no greater deity than Mistra. I see you understand. Magic is... my life. I've been in touch with the Weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Is it the same for you? That sounds familiar, yes. Perhaps we can share the experience by reaching into the Weave together. By all means. Then follow my lead. Now you. A kind word and a kind touch at the same time. It's warm and comfortable. Excellent. Now, repeat after me. Athran Mr. Real Kantrak Eo. Athran Mr. Real Kantrak Eo. Ah, yes. The scent of rose water and a sense of well being. A sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue. Very good. Now, I want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony. As true as you can. The sensation of the sun kissing my face on a crisp winter morning. When the entire world slumbers and the only melody is the gentle hum of birds immersed in their dawn duties. You see, or is it sense, the presence of a woman the woman who hovered over Gale's palm. There's something like the anticipation of a kiss, then the pleasure of being cloaked in peace. You are safe. You are nestled in the cup of Mistra's hand. Look at that. We're channeling the weave. How does it feel? Magical. Sensual, even. That it does. The weave connects you. The moment feels intimate. Thank you, Gail. This was truly wondrous. The weave evaporates. And as it does so, you realize the night feels suddenly cold and lonesome. Oh. There it goes. How easily things slip away from us. No matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. Speak. Do you know what happens if we don't find a cure? Yes. In great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist, and a Mind Flayer is born. That's not going to happen. We will find a cure. Words forged in steel. May your actions express the same metal. We must find my kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me.
There's something I've been wanting to share with you. If now's a good time. I'm all ears. It's difficult to put into words. I think it might be easier to just show you. Use the tadpole. The connection. Come into my mind. I don't remember how it started. Only how it ended. I was fleeing. said. I can't remember anything before those woods. All I know is she saved my life and gave me a new home with Lady Shah. <laughs> it hurts. That's all I remember. You remember that it is common amongst Saluna's followers to send their children into the woods alone, a rite of passage to find their way home. Perhaps this one has gone awry. You looked like you were wearing a moonstone. Isn't that commonly worn by Selenites? <laughs> You're reading too much into things. A childhood bauble, that's all. Just because Selenites claim something doesn't mean they own it. Of course. Thank you for sharing that with me. I know it can't have been easy. Normally I'd agree. But with you, it's getting easier by the moment. Can we talk more? Fine. What's on your mind? What do you think about me? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. After all, what I shared with you about my past, about being saved from the wolf, that is not something I would normally even dream of sharing. Thank you, Shadowheart. I feel the same, for what is worth. Something didn't like that. Now this 
This is my happy place. Well, look what we have here. Good idea. Most of this book's pages have been carefully burned away. Those that remain contain a single sentence, rewritten in varying states of agitation. In her form, I find ecstasy. The spell is not enough. Though originally a screed on loath penned in blood, this book's crimson script has been smeared away in several places, a different hand writing atop it. I recall my life upon the surface with more than regret. I weep for the decades spent treading the murky waters of profanity while my true queen waited in the shadows. Even my name, Eliette, feels foreign and foul upon my tongue. The rest is a story about devotion to Lolf, the Spider Queen. This book's leaves are stuck with thick webbing that leeches ink when pulled from the page. Only the final entry remains remotely legible. It is time, I will forever transcend this blasphemous flesh and refashion myself in the queen's image. No longer will I be bound to this lowly form, this base shape of Menzo Baranzan shall weep at my feet, their little spells so feeble and fleeting. Today, I found the house of Lol, and shall be its matriarch. The big spider, the matriarch that I just killed, used to be a person that was so, let's say, devoted to Lolf that turned herself into a spider. That's commitment, I'll give her that. Here she is, let's see if she has any more goodies. Nice. Feel that? A breeze. Something's down there. Well, after you. 
Hmm, interesting. A dark amethyst. Go ahead. I'm listening. Do you have much experience being a teacher of magic? I suspect so. I've had a pupil or two, but never for very long. Their ineptitudes tend to... irk me. You do seem to be a precocious talent, though. I can always tell when I meet a keen mind receptive to Mistra. Keep it up, and she might just take a personal interest in you one of these days. place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps? The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormier, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Am I talking to the mouse or the cat? Neither. The fox, rather. Hiding, in a word. A silent observer, about to break the silence. Of course, what I have to say merits some privacy, as well as some more... Let's call it... refinement. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There, middle of somewhere. I don't like this at all. Can you be more specific than somewhere? The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. What makes you say that? Call it a ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Fuck. A cambion. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary. Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. I don't care what you are. I care what you want. Oh, a mere trifle. How dear is one's soul, really? A rhetorical question, of course, but let me venture an up. It's worth very little with a tadpole in your head. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. You're mad if you think I'll make a deal with the devil. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you'll change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, 
borrow and steal, exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. That's what separates us from the devil, soldier. They think our greatest strength is a weakness. Take me back. After that, I never want to see you again. By all means, bite the hand that feeds you. While you still have teeth. All those pretty little symptoms. Sundering skin, dissolving guts. They haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Bloody hells. Literally. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one, too. Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him? He's a devil. We shouldn't trust him. Simple as that. No doubts at all. He seemed powerful and very knowledgeable about our problem. Not the worst prospect we've stumbled across. As long as you can look past what he is. Enough about me. What do you think is best? I'll tell you in due course. I just wanted to see how close we are in thinking, first of all. I'm not going to change my mind. We can't trust Raphael. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. He's clever. My order uses the same tactic when dealing with enemies of Shah. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt are sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. I didn't realize you were so well-versed in mental and emotional torment. Aren't you glad that I am? It's an effective trick. Watch out for it. And for Raphael. I can't help but feel you and I might have missed a chance to connect. Truly connect. I think I know what you mean. There's an undeniable rapport, and yet we haven't made time for each other. Time alone. Easily remedied, if you like. I know a place. I'd like that. Just lead the way. Not just yet. Let's choose our moment. Some quiet night. When the others are asleep and there's no distractions, I'll come for you. Can't believe that devil just took us into the hells with a snap of his fingers. If I see him again, I'll wring his neck. Was that the hells? How could you tell? My engine stopped fuming for one. But even without that, I could just feel it. Raphael was his name, right? He's trying to lure us into a game he knows we can't win. I'm not playing. Glad you're not, either. <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. He's not. We still have options. Maybe. But all that, take your time, I'll wait, nonsense. He's playing with us. Gazador, my old master, liked to toy with people too. Let them think there was hope right until the end. Until he snatched it all away. Creatures like them don't play games. Unless they know they can win. We're not his playthings. We'll show him that. Maybe. 
But he's not the only one spinning a web for us. This is no ordinary mind flare parasite. Who tampered with it and why? What do they have planned for us? And why are we important enough that a devil comes knocking on our door? If we find those answers, we might have a chance. Slow down. What's wrong? Can't you hear it? Her singing. It's awful. Terrible. Don't mock her. She's trying her best. I assume... Oh no. Whatever shall we do? More witless creatures. More ear bleed. My head is melting. I'm leaving before the damage is permanent. Dance upon the stars tonight Smile and pain will fade away Words of mine will change No Become Ugh. Change? No Damn it! Tough audience, those animals weren't shy with their criticisms they were cheering me on. Ugh. Even animals think I'm terrible. I want to finish this song, but I can't. Nothing fits, you know? That's the creative process for you, agony and ecstasy. Mostly agony. True. And when you finally perfect a song, there's nothing like it. But when you're stuck and it's just getting worse, oh. Can I help you finish the song? Hmm. It can't hurt. I have her. I have an extra loot, if you want. First things first, what's the song about? My teacher, Lihala. She loved dancing. Her two left feet mind. I remember waking up one night on the road and seeing her. Dancing beneath the stars. A huge smile on her face. Thinking of it now... My heart hurts. And my words just seem to crumble. Like ash. Wait. Words of mine will turn to ash. That's perfect. Keep going. What would you say to your teacher if she were here right now? That... That it's okay. That I'll be okay. And thank you. For everything. All right, that's what your lyrics need to say. Moon, moon reminds me of your grace. All the love I can't repay. Wait.
the stars tonight Smile and pain will fade away Words of mine will turn to ash When you call the last night down Moon reminds me of your grace All the love I can't repay Rest and know that I will pray Farewell, my dear old friend the stars tonight smile and pain will fade away I'm sorry that song was beautiful worthy of a few tears <laughs> thanks that's the first time I've played since Lehala died my teacher she was playing her lute. We didn't hear the gnolls coming. There was so much blood. Uh, I can still smell it. I'm sure your teacher would be proud to see you now. <laughs> She'd yell at me for that clunky verse and make me play till my fingers were raw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Finish the Weeping Dawn. For her. I have a long way to go. But thank you. Uh, I needed this. <laughs>